So in this video, we're going to cover how to create a, a train track that is completely procedural and we can make it longer, change its path, and everything updates as it should. I have four objects in the scene already. One is a spline represented of the path for the train. The uh, next one is a profile of the actual rail itself. So I'm just using, you know, this uh, um, a spline here and uh, it is uh, you know been shaped it was just started with a rectangle i've made sure the pivot is in this case uh, in the middle at the bottom and spline mirror is moving it over this is all modeled to scale uh, north american rail standards i think is four foot eight and a half inches uh, between the rails um, then we have a box with a chamfer modifier on it and uh, you know you could use a chamfer box you could model it up more or whatever but this is uh you know represents the wood underneath the, uh, the tracks you know we could also model into it the um the, the clips or the the uh, spikes that are holding the track down whatever else we like and this blind out the bottom here is representing the the gravel that goes underneath the track that's going to uh, be added so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the track itself and make the track so i'm going to go over to the the pass and I'm going to add a uh, sweep modifier. And of course, it comes in with a custom shape, not what we are, uh, sorry, a built in shape. We want a custom shape. We're going to say pick. And there's our track. Now, I've reduced the um, steps in the path uh, so that the, or the shape, the profile uh, in the interpolation. Uh, so that it doesn't produce way more vertices than are necessary around the, um, you know, around it, because it just, you know, it's, it's a track. How, how close are we ever going to get to it? So just mirrored that over with a spline mirror modifier, and we have a track following. Now, the next thing we're going to add is the, um, the wood. We're going to add the, the pieces across. And so I'm going to use a, the array modifier because it's so darn handy. And I'm going to set that onto spline, and I'm going to say pick spline. You'll notice I can't pick the spline. The reason I can't pick the spline is because the spline is no longer a spline. It's a sweep modifier, so therefore it's geometry now. So here's a fantastic trick to get around that and be able to have a spline still. I'm just going to cut this off the top so I can just reapply it again once I've finished this. So we have the original uh, path selected here for the track where it's going to go. I'm going to go Control V to bring up the clone options. And there are three different clone options, and everybody knows what copy is. You copy two objects, essentially they are two separate objects. One does not affect the other. If you instance two objects, they are the identical object. They can have different transforms, but if you change the height of one, it'll change the height of the other, for instance. If we change the uh, shape of the path, it would change the shape of the path on the other. What most people don't realize is reference is incredibly handy. So what reference does is it allows the new reference objects to reference back to the original, but have their own modifier stack on top. So I'm going to say reference. And when this is created, you can see that the bottom is in bold. Okay, the line is bolded. So that means that it's actually instanced effectively at the bottom of the stack or whatever is below this blue line is an instance and will share exactly the same properties between the two. Everything above Above this blue line is unique to this reference object. So I'm going to right click on the blue line and say paste and paste my sweep modifier up above. Okay, so we can see now that I can still select this um, spline, the path, and if I move a point and change it, you can see the track is updating. Okay. So that's incredibly handy to be able to do that. Now, one of the things we've got here is you can see the steps along the length aren't uh, aren't very nice. Now we could uh, mess with the the steps in the path, but you know that may not get us exactly what uh, what we want because those steps, the uh, the segments along it, the interpolation is between each knot. So if the knots are a long way apart, we're going to get a whole lot less segments, and we might want them even. So one of the easy ways to do this is to add a normalized spline modifier. Now we can either add it to the original or we can add it below this bar at the bottom. So I could show this in a fact where I could select it, make sure show end results not on because we need it to see a spline when we go to do this. And that is the normalized spline modifier or else it, it, this just won't show up if you have show end result on because it says, hey, this isn't a spline, it's a sweep above right it's geometry above so we're going to add that in and immediately you can see it evens everything out so we've got this seg length that we're adding in here 
Um, you know, and one of the other ones I do to even simplify it more is say linear segments. And I find sometimes in, uh, simple interpolation also will clean some things up. Uh, so I'll tend to um, tag those on. Now we can play around with this um, value here to determine how many segments we want along its length. What's also nice is this is happening on both splines. What if we don't need it on the bottom spline? We could simply take it and actually only add it to this spline. So you can see that, that the original still has these big segments in it, whereas the uh, referenced one now has the uh, refinements to it. So do we need it on the original? We can pick and choose here whether it's on both or whether it's only on one. So the next step then is our piece of wood. We're going to use the array modifier like we uh, tried, and we're going to pick the spline. So we can now pick that and add it to it. Um, and that is going to give us, you know, elements along it. We'll probably want to rotate it, you know, 90 degrees in the Z. And we can say count, but that's not going to update automatically with the distance. We're just going to say fill, and we're going to fill the, that, uh, that space in there. Now, with fill on, we can then uh, go ahead and determine what the spacing is between them and and set the uh, spacing or, you know, change the offset, uh, you know, down lower. So however you want to do this. So you can see we can go ahead and just pick and choose how many we want, how far they need to be apart. Again, let's go back to our spline. Let's check it out. We can grab it now and we can adjust it and everything follows along. And in fact, more, uh, more of those blocks of wood are being added because it's required to be able to fill the spline. So that becomes incredibly handy. Now for this piece here, we're gonna use sweep again. So let's grab the original spline. Let's make another reference and in that reference, again, we're going to go in, add a sweep. And I've made sure that the pivot was in the right place uh, when I was modeling it. So it's going to place it in the right location. Now it's actually inside out uh, because my uh, first knot is in the wrong place on the spline. So you can either use the normal modifier to flip it over. But something to note, the location of the first knot, which happens to be here, is going to actually change where, uh, which way it gets built. So I'm going to say make first at the end. And we should be able to go back up to the spline, uh, I'm sorry, up to the uh, sweep modifier. And find some, sometimes I find you've got to repick. And it doesn't look like it wants to do it. But sometimes that will actually change. It could be fact that I've got the uh, spline mirror in here that it wants to come right from the other end. That could be uh, the, uh, the problem here. So in this case, we'll just call the uh, normal modifier on here and we'll say flip normals so it's the right way up and we've got the uh, correct sort of shape i'm going to give that some brown values and it'll look a little bit more correct let's give this some uh, you know sort of gray like gray values for our track so exactly the same thing now is as you can see the segments along this are low and as i grab that original spline and start to pull on it I'm going to start getting these very segmented shapes again. So I could easily go now and take the same normalized spline modifier. I'm going to right click on that and say copy, head down to my, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, whatever this is called, the base or whatever it is. And I'm going to paste an instance of this in here. Now you can see that I can't again show end results on. So I'm going to take that off and I should be able to go paste instance. So here's a really interesting solution here that's happening that what I've got is essentially, you can think of it at the bottom of the stack, this is an instance spline. So this spline is instance between all of the objects. So it is handling all of them, okay? And it's being, uh, you know, uh, updated as one updates, it updates all of them. On the uh, pieces of wood, the, uh, you know, which is a little simpler. We've just got an array modifier on a path and it's following the original first path. The two track pieces, the track and this base piece down here have a um, normalized spline modifier on them. And that normalized spline modifier is instanced between those two objects. So it has an instance normalized spline modifier, making sure that the amount of segments along the length of it are the same. But then the base piece has a sweep with a unique 
um, you know, unique sweep modifier and a normal modifier that's unique. And the track then has a unique sweep modifier. So this is an incredibly good, uh, you know, example of being able to mix references, instances, and uh, unique uh, elements together to be able to come up with an, uh, a track in this case that allows us to be able to just, you know, grab it and extend it at will. So we can easily just go and grab that and and create more track and it's going to update no scripting needed nothing fancy and it's going to update as we uh, need